Welcome. This is item number 31 from the sp released spring 2014 test items for 7th grade TCAP math. Now, I'm going to go way off the board, maybe in some situations, uh, from what they probably want you to do to solve this problem. And I'm just going to look at it in a different way. If you're here, uh, you've probably gone through other methods and still couldn't figure out maybe why they got a, a answer A. And we'll just create a test situation and then work with it. Now if we know that you have to have three cases of white paper for every two cases of Welcome, this is item number 31 from the spring 2014 test release items for 7th grade TCAP math. Now the deal about this question is I'm gonna go way off what they may have wanted you to do with this problem because I really don't care or understand what they want you to do with this problem. Like I get where they some of their answers come from, but uh, to me, it's going to make more sense just to create a, an alternate scenario and test to see if our answers are correct. Makes more sense, right? So the question says the workers at a print shop use, is, use three cases of white paper for every two cases of color. Which equation represents the relationship between W, the number of cases of white paper used, and C, the number of cases of color paper used? Uh, so really, they're saying every time you have two cases of colored paper, you use three cases of white. So why don't we just upgrade that number a little bit, you know, using a little bit of multiplication, and then just test to see if it gives us the answer we suspect. So if I have, this is always in a group, it's always going to be uh, three white and two color. So let's just multiply two color by two, so we should get four color, and that would mean we're going to get six white. So I'm going to test the idea of, okay, if I plug in four color, I should get six white back. So let's do the test. So for the first one, three over two, and I'm going to substitute in a four. Because why wouldn't I test it? It makes no sense to have it if you don't make sure it's correct. So I'll do four times three over two. I mean, this one really, I don't need a calculator for. Four times three is 12. 12 divided by two is six. But just in case, you know, you can get that feel for it. Hit enter, it gives me six. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. So let's do some others. We'll do two thirds times four, and then we'll try w equals four plus one, and then w equals four minus one. Well, this one equals six like it's supposed to. That's why it works. Four plus one is equal to five, so that's out. Four minus one is equal to three, so that's not looking good. It's like I doubled the color paper and the amount of white paper didn't change. That If it says it happens every time in that relationship, we know it's not correct. And then 2 thirds times 4, so I'll just do 4 times 2 thirds. Why I felt like I needed to use the calculator again makes no sense, because 4 times 2 is 8 and divided by 3, and I'm getting 2 and 2 thirds. But still, it's not 6 like it's supposed to be, so it equals 2 and 2 thirds. So that's not it. So the answer has to be this one. So really, I didn't need to go through a lot of conceptual thought about, well, you know, the nature of the mathematical universe in this question. And in many cases, you don't need to bother with it. I mean, it's there to be done if you choose to do it. But the world of math doesn't always require you to go to the furthest, you know, component of all math just to figure out the fact that, okay, well, what if I just double this number and test? If I had done 2 times 3 and gotten... 6, and then I'd done 3 times 3 and got 9, well, the other, it would still work. So I had, sorry, I had 3 times 3 over 2. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to just put 6 times 3 over 2. I don't know what this was. 6 times 3 over 2, because this is me doing what happens if this becomes 6. So you just do times 3, so over here should give me 9. So if I do 6 times 3 over 2, works out. So you don't always have to beat your head against the wall trying to come up with, well, what did my teacher say about this, and how do I write this down? Just create a situation that works, and as long as you're using like a multiply relationship on both sides, it's going to give you the answer that you can test. That way you don't have to think so much about the theoretical and work in the real world, quote-unquote. So there you go.